Hello guys, so I got married this year in Korea in January 2020. I thought I would make some videos about the process of getting married in Korea and hopefully you guys find these videos helpful. I am from USA so all of the information that I'm going to be giving you guys is for US citizens only. I'm not sure about other countries what documents you will need but this is specifically for Americans. Before you can register your marriage in Korea, you will need to prove that you're not married in America. You're going to need a document from the U.S. Embassy. It is called the Affidavit of Eligibility for Marriage. In order to get the document, you're going to need to visit the U.S. Embassy in Seoul. And first, you have to go onto the embassy website and make an appointment and I will show you guys how to do that now go ahead and open up your browser and we're gonna search for US Embassy Seoul and for the marriage affidavit you will see this top link getting married in Korea and go ahead and click on that on this page, you can see everything that you need to take to the U.S. Embassy and the whole process and steps that you will need to get married in Korea. When you go to the embassy, you need proof of citizenship. I just brought my passport. And the second thing you're going to need is the application form, but you can just fill that out when you get to the embassy. Okay, and the last thing you're going to need is the fee. It's $50 USD, but I think I just paid with Korean won. I probably brought like um, 60 or 70 KRW. So just make sure you have cash or your card. And as we scroll down, you can see the rest of the steps on how to get married in Korea. But I will talk about that process in another video. So let's go ahead and I will show you guys how to make an appointment and my experience going to the embassy. Now we have to make an appointment at the embassy and I'm just going to go back to the embassy page. And you can see here it says appointment system. I just clicked appointment system and you scroll down and you'll see this important message. Just click on that and it'll bring you to the appointment page. So we're going to want to make an appointment. Number one, make an appointment. On this page, you'll choose the reason for visiting the embassy. You'll just choose the last one, request other notarial services and agree and go to the next page you'll see the calendar and the yellow boxes are the available appointments and you can see the number how many spots are available when you click here you can see the times listed here this one only has one time available at nine o'clock but if you don't want that time then you can go search for other times most of the available appointments are only for afternoon time. I know when I went, all of the appointments were only in the afternoon. So I'm not sure now if they have morning times available or not. But you can see how many spaces are available. So just choose the time you want and fill out all of the information. After you make your appointment, make sure you print out the receipt or confirmation page because you will need that number later on. On the day of your appointment, you're going to want to go to the U.S. Embassy. You should take the purple line 5 to Guanghuangmun Station. And the embassy is by exit 2. As you walk out of exit 2, just go straight a little bit. And then you're going to want to turn on the right. If you're looking at the embassy, then it's going to be the right side. So just walk down the right side of the embassy and you're going to enter through that side door you don't want to enter in the front door make sure you're going to that side entrance once you get to the side entrance just go up to the window and tell them your name your appointment time and they will just check if your name is on the list 
When you enter the building, you cannot bring any bags. So make sure you leave your bag at home or you can leave your bag in the subway station lockers. Once you enter the building, then you're going to be going through security and you have to check in your cell phone. And if you have any keys, you give it to them and they'll give you a little keychain tag. So when you are finished, then just give them that tag and you can collect all your belongings. I brought like a paper file with me and I wrote down all of my important information and address because they did take my phone away so I just wanted to make sure I had all of my information written down in case I couldn't remember it. So after you go through security, you just enter the door and you want to stay on the first floor even if it's empty and there's nobody there. I think it just means all of the workers are at lunchtime. When I went there, it was really empty so I thought I was supposed to go to like a different floor or down the hall but you just stay in that waiting room and wait for all of the workers to come. And don't forget, you need to get a ticket number. So take one of those number tickets out of the machine because when the workers come or if they are there, then they will call your number and then that's when you can go to their window. While I was waiting, I was looking for the affidavit form, but it wasn't out there. I had to actually wait until the teller came and gave it to me to fill it out. My appointment was at 12.45 p.m. and once all of the workers came to their windows, my number was called and I went up to the lady and I just told her I'm here for the marriage affidavit and she gave me the form to fill out so I actually had to get out of line and go and fill out the form. After I filled out my form, I went to the payment window and I paid for my document and I got the receipt and I just waited for the other lady to call me back and after that, she just took the document, checked everything and I went back and sat down. They will check your documents again and you just wait for your name to be called. Once they call your name, they'll also say a counter number and you just go to the right side that's where all of the counters are and just go up to that window. Once you get to the window, you just say a small oath like I swear my name is blah blah blah, I'm not married. And then the notary person, she will just congratulate you and she will sign and notarize the document. And that is pretty much it. Once you have the document, then just have your Korean significant other copy the document into Korean in the same format and they should also put their name at the bottom and sign it. I hope you guys found this video helpful and useful and I will talk about getting the marriage license in Korea in my next video. So please like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.